So let's see how to create a destructor. A destructor is used to uh, clean up your memory or to make your application more efficient. Uh, but luckily for C Sharp, uh, if you have any memory leaks or memory problems, the garbage collector will kick in time to time and uh, clean up your memory. You really ha don't have to do this, but sometimes it's really a good practice to use the destructor and when you have a huge list of items it's really a good practice to remove it uh, in the destructor so let's see how to create a destructor in a class so let me switch over to visual studio here i'm in the visual studio uh, we could go to our person class and i have separated my person class with those uh, regions I really like to separate my codes and like to use the regions and you could separate your codes like the regions I, I will show you. you could do it by control K and then S then you go to Visual Studio and go to region and then I'm going to say that destructors destructor because you can have only one or zero destructor to write a destructor you have to uh, uh, put the tilde sign I call it tilde sign I really don't know that what it's called but really remember that it's really called the tilde sign so whatever it is uh, put this and then write your class name and that's it that's your destructor so uh, if you have a huge list you should clean up your list but for now we're going to just print out that uh, the structure is called that's it so let's really like uh, write uh, run the program and let's see what happened and I'm pretty sure the destructor will not be called so why did I make mistake okay so that's it destructor is not called so destructor why is not called because uh, my person is not uh, destroyed so let's really destroy it by setting it to null because it doesn't have any memory reference to it so a garbage collector will kicks in and destroy it at some point and this is when the construct uh, uh, classes destructor will be called but uh, for C sharp uh, if we run this you, you will not see this happen right away uh, to do this happen right away you can do what you can do is call the garbage collector write GC GC is the garbage collector and say collect that's it and now if I run my uh, code I'll see that the structure is called now let's see some uh, complex scenarios not really complex just the simple scenarios but uh, now I'm going to go uh, break some rules that I have said earlier but that's just for the convenience of file for this demonstration but it's not the right way to do the work that we have discussed earlier and I have so many files in my project and we're going to include one by one as we need those so we're going to include the destructor class and here I have uh, introduced two classes in one file it's just because that uh, it's just a demo purpose but uh, on a professional project you shouldn't do that so here I have a simple destructor class and then I'm just going to uh, comment out this portion because we are not there yet uh, we have really a list where we have created uh, we make a capacity of 2000 if you know the list objects it already creates the 2000s elements or array in the memory heap so at the end of it I'm going to set the list to null so that it wouldn't take any more memory at the heap and then I'm calling the destructor it will be same as before but this time the method will be different and uh, we're really cleaning up something it's not really very fancy but let's just do it the structure class oh let's see so let's show you something else here we are uh, doing the person and then we're saying that the 
object name so the first thing you define is your uh, data type so a person is a data type whenever you make a class it it's a data type and a class's discrete name is data structure so whenever you see uh, that it is about data structure you have to understand that it's about class but uh, in very detailed manner that's it so what you can do as a C sharp programming write var so you have to really understand the var var is like I'm really too lazy to figure out the type so what happens is at the compile time var is compiled to person the person will be replaced into the var you cannot write like per p that's it if you compile it you'll get an error yes that's so let's just do it very quick yeah that you cannot compile it because you're implicitly defining a thing but you're not defining that what the uh, thing would be so it's really giving you an error so it at the compile time the compiler doesn't know that what type it should put so that's it for var and there is also a dynamic data type and uh, let's really go over dynamic very quick because many people are confused with dynamic and var and dynamic and var are not really two same things dynamic resolves at runtime and var resolves at compile time so whatever happens uh, uh, here will be defined at compile time when I put the uh, start command and dynamic resolves when you need the object or at the runtime when you uh, call the object it will resolve dynamic is weekly type if you have ever have any idea about weekly type C sharp is the same type strongly type and weekly type so let's not go very deep into this because there are very deep conversations about these type of topics just go very simple and um, create our class and this time I'm just going to go var I'm not going to just a new structure class that's it structure and then I'm going to set the destructor equals now and if I run it again I will not see the destructor method is called so if I run it I'll see the capacity but destructor method is not still called so to do that I will have to again call the garbage collector and see that the structure method is uh, called and the least was now at this moment so I know that it is clean so that's how you can use the destructor now let's quickly move over to our slides static modifiers we're going to go very deep into this static modifier because the first time I learned it I have to struggle a lot so and in my career I have seen many people who really uh, doesn't get the static modifier very quickly so we're going to go very slow and very detailed in this static modifier topic two things that you should remember that static members can be accessed without instantiating the class and static modifiers modifier members are load uh, at first the application is wrong so if you have a static variable or a static object in your application it will be shared across uh, every user that's the summary so let's really dive into it if you're marking a class as static then you should have to mark all the members as static if you don't do that you will face a, a compilation error and if you have a static class you cannot inherit it as well as create it and static classes don't have any constructor or destructors so what about the members so public static members can be accessible by class name only from anywhere without instantiating the class so you instantiate a class by new keyword so that uh, you can you can access any public static member without instantiating 
uh, the class and from anywhere by its name only it's a very important concept and we're going to go very deep into it and if you have a private static member or only static member inside a class uh, then you can only static uh, you can only access it from uh, the static members only that's the two concept that you should remember for the members and we're going to go very deep into it with examples and let's see the next slide uh, assume that this is Visual Studio and uh, I'm writing my statement and uh, let's see some code let's say that I have a class A and a method public static method print and I have a private non static method that is foo now if I try if I want to access the print method of that class A I can write the class name directly class A and put a dot and then call the method and it will run just fine let's say you have or we have another class B and we have three places one is public constructor which is a public method assumed to be and another is private method and another is private static method so if we want to access the uh, public static method of that class A what we can do is write the class name and dot and then uh, call the method and it will work just fine so same is also true for anything method and the static anything method and uh, you could pause the video and go by line and uh, try to understand and if you have any problem mail me it is very simple and uh, if you have time try to compile it in Visual Studio you will get the correct result so let's say you have a private static method or uh, only static method which doesn't have any uh, modifier access modifier in front of it so here is my private static method uh, print and I have a non-static method and a static method in my class so let's say I want to access that uh, private static method with my class name and I can do that because it's not a public method and if I try to access it by the this keyword I will again fail because it is a non-static method and you cannot call static method from a non-static method and let's try it on the static method if we do that these dot print will be successful because we can call static methods or members from static uh, members and if we try to access again with class a dot print it will not be succeeded and let's see uh, the example for class b and for all the examples we will be failed because it is a private static member we cannot access it outside the class so that's it uh, it's a very simple example and it really describes all of the static members abilities so if you have any questions mail me right away i will really get back to you as soon as possible so 